Hi, it's Martin from the Accelerator team here, Rob Sinedla, and I'm speaking today to Graeme Harrison from CCBS. Hi, Graeme, how are you doing? Hi, Martin. Not bad yourself? I'm excellent. Graeme, tell us why we're here, what we're talking about, so what do you do? So today we're going to talk about commercial finance. So I uh, work for a brokerage, uh, CCBS, um, and effectively we supply commercial finance or we find commercial finance for businesses. So we look at anything from loans to commercial properties to assets uh, for companies. Right, let's go through these things then. So um, I suppose in any business, there's multiple ways you can get money into a business. You could personally inject some money. Yeah. That may or may not require remortgaging your personal assets, yeah. but that's one. The other way is you could give away equity. You could give someone could buy shares, yeah. take, take a stake in the business. We're not really focusing on that no. today, but we might highlight a couple of the differences between the approaches and why you may or may not want to do something like that. Um, but primarily what we're talking about here is a business borrowing money from someone. Exactly that. So, so typically debt. So we're looking at, um, you know, what you, would, what you would normally think of, you going to your bank, you get debt at a fixed interest rate or at an interest rate, which you borrow over a certain period of time. Um, and, and we look at the, the various reasons and the various kind of products and, and types of um, uh, debt related products that, that would be out not, there. All lending is not the same, is it? The, no, the, the, absolutely. There's a dramatically different Ab approach to all of these different things. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. So it's, it's, a, it's very much a horses for courses type thing. So various reasons, various uh, drivers behind getting funding into a business um, will lead you down a, a path which will um, open up different debt type products. Yeah. As you say, the, the, there are other ways of getting funding into a business. So you've got your, your equity, um, as you say, where people will invest um, into your business. And, and so take so the, share the two main options are debt and equity. And yes. People say, well, I don't want to give away equity. What they normally mean is they don't want to take on a business partner or a shareholder. They don't want to give away a stake in their business. Exactly that. That's they don't equity, want to give yeah. any ownership away from the business, which in the short term, um, c can be great because there's, 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 there's nothing to repay there. You don't have to service any debt, but in the long term tends to be more expensive because the business grows and becomes more valuable. That, that investment repaying it is worth a lot more as it increases with the shareholding. Yeah. So yeah, for us, it is very much an instrument um, that is, you know, there is a, a, a cash going into a business um, and, a, and a, a rate of return for yeah. the provider. Um, which is typically is typically fixed yeah. um, or certainly you know amortized. And what what type of events normally drive a business to then look for money? Yeah, so uh, an event. So 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 typically, if somebody's speaking to me, as exactly as you say, there's an it's it's because there's there's an event. So they are looking to grow. If a business is growing, it, it burns a lot of cash. Um, if a business is looking to, they might have won a contract and they need um, some new equipment to service that contract. Mm, so, tool, so, tool up ready for exactly it. Yeah, exactly so you might get a massive order. Actually, we can't quite cope with that. But if we can just get over that hump, get the order delivered. Exactly that. So, so capital expenditure. So, so um, oh, sorry. So, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll look at you know getting getting the cash into the business to process uh, or service an order. Um, you might need to upgrade equipment, or you might might need to buy equipment. So, you know, if 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 it's a a, a business that um, you know manually processes something, and all of a sudden the 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 um, the orders go off the the scale, then actually they need to mechanise that, and that might be machine. They might or, want to put a production line exactly in, that. and yeah, yeah. Um, or if a business is 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 distressed, so if if uh, for whatever reason something's occurred in the business where cash becomes an issue. Um, you know, profitability, as, as you'll know better than anybody, profitability um, isn't normally the reason why businesses fail or businesses come into, issue, come into problems. It's normally the management of cash around yeah, that business. Yeah. So sometimes it could just be a timing thing and it's a mechanism of, of, of getting cash into the business. Again, getting um, over a short term yes. cash, I suppose, resource issue. Yeah. They might have a profit. Every sale might be profitable. They might be producing a profitable good or service. Yeah. But if they just haven't got enough money because they've got long payment terms, for instance, or something like that. Exactly, yeah. exactly that. We, we, yeah. we, we've had clients who, um, it happens to trades quite a lot, they get to a reasonable size, then they start doing work for, you know, like the, the, the big nationals, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, we pay on 120 days. Then I, yeah. oh, hold on. It's, we're, we're used to homeowners paying us when we're, when we're raising it, it, invoice. It is so bizarre. And what people tend to find, and, and, you know, everybody has different circumstances, but what people tend to find is, 
the bigger the organisation they're dealing with. So everybody will chase those those blue chip contracts. Desperate to work for Centrica. Yeah, yeah. But they'll never pay you. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. You know, you you you'll, you'll talk about all of the the um the the big boys if you like your, your B and Qs, your Argos's, your um you know all of the your Asda's, your supermarkets. All of these um come with the 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 relative security of of payments. So you know. You know, the likelihood of them going bust, not going to go bust. is, is but, minimal, but, but all of a just, sudden... But they'll just never pay you. Yeah, but all of a sudden getting <laughs> payments out of them quickly is is a massive issue. So you're used to you know, you're used to dealing with people that pay on the nose or pay pay when the job's done. All of a sudden you're waiting 90, 120 days for, for, for significant so, payments. So, so you might be someone who's um we'll just we'll say a small scale, it could still be a big enterprise, mm -hmm. but you get an opportunity for that kind of work, you need to fund three months worth of yes. cash flow, don't yeah. you? Ex Once you can get over that hump, you, you, okay. you're in, you've got it. You're used to now that 90, 120 days. So that's the kind of thing. So, because people think, well, if I'm profitable and I'm expanding, why would I need to borrow money? That might be the case. And, yeah. Or it could be that actually, it, it, you know, when you say you're in difficulty, it could just be that uh, someone who owed you a lot of money's gone bust. Yeah. And it was just that one thing. You were otherwise fine. And it's a shame if that was going to kill your business. Yeah, there's various things. I mean, we see a lot of distressed businesses. We, we, we work with companies um, that are going through some form of process, might have some sort of insolvency um, practitioner within the business or, or, or going through something. But ultimately, if you're working with them um, in a distressed scenario, there is a good viable business in there. There is an issue because you know, either yeah, somebody may have gone bust, maybe they have just overstretched themselves from a cash perspective and there's no clawing it back. And if or you leave if, it too late, it's quite hard to then capture the momentum back your way, isn't it? Exa exactly, exactly. You start missing payments, getting CCCG, it's really quite hard then to Ex salvage, isn't it? Exactly, so it's it's understanding um, kind of what the what the, the 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 good business or the viable business looks like, where the issues are, or what's what's come about to, to get them into a, a, a position um, that they are, and then and then working to resolve that. But but you know most of the time, cash a cash injection, if they understand the problem and if they address the problems, cash injection can help around that. Um, so, yeah, because so, yeah. you don't want to throw. Good money after bad. This is exactly. the old we, saying, isn't it? Yeah, and and, and when I say it's there's, got, there's got to be a structural change to make sure the future is different to the past. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's it's understanding, and sometimes um, you know you will speak to a, a, a business, and and everybody in the room will come to the kind of quiet conclusion that actually the business just isn't viable. And at that stage, sometimes my job is going in and saying, I know you want to raise X amount, but it feels like that would be the worst thing to do because all you're doing there There's is nothing, increasing yeah, your yeah. personal exposure yeah. in a gone scenario so it's having having that conversation as well but but um but yeah most of the time we're working to to um you know to try and try and work through yeah. business issues i think i think it's worth talking loosely then about some of the different types of finance but before we do it's interesting you've just said their personal exposure because a lot of people think but it's the company that's borrowing the money mm -hmm. or it's the business and 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 most people hopefully appreciate there is a difference. If you're a sole trader or, or you're a partnership, then normally the partner or the sole trader, they do have personal responsibility to pay yeah, the debts. Fully liable, but, yeah. but But a lot of people think, but it's a company. Mm -hmm. I've got limited liability. Mm -hmm. But often the lender will want to see some kind of personal guarantee. Yeah, over. yeah exactly. So so most lending, um, especially, you know, well, depending on where you are in the, in the, um, in your business's life and how, how mature the business is, but most lending will come with some form of, of personal guarantee or some, some form of security, which will, um, I mean, the term that you will hear often is will give the director some skin in the game. Um, and, and that, that for, from a funding perspective, that ensures that the directors are doing the right things and are, are you know almost they've got some leverage to make sure they're working with them so yeah. somebody doesn't so have... skin in the game means they've got something at risk as well yes. haven't they? Yeah. so the director's house is now on the line as yeah. well so oh, we believe in you but do you believe in yourself yeah exactly yeah. that so then you have you have different kinds of security that goes with um with various types of funding so a personal guarantee would would typically be um, unsupported, i.e. you've signed something that just, it's effectively a promissory note. I promise to pay you back the sum of X amount, um, uh, you know, 
come rain or shine. Sorry. So that's that's seen as a um, as a, as an unsupported guarantee. Or you have what we we uh, call a secured lend. Secured lend tends to be against bricks and mortar. So that could be a house. Um, it could be a commercial property. Um, but you will have a charge against something. It could even be a, a charge against an asset within a business. Um, you know, there's no reason, and and uh, you know, it's certainly um, fairly normal to take charges over over things if you're funding them. Yeah, yeah. Um, over business assets. And, and and again, the quite basic premise there for for anyone who's who's new to some of these terms is that if you fail to pay the loan, the lender will take that thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, so you've exactly. got a building worth a hundred grand. You want to borrow fifty. Okay, if you don't pay that 50 back, well, we're going to take that asset, we'll sell it. If there's any spare, you can have it, but we're going to pay the loan off first. Yeah. And, that, and normally, they're not bothered about how much to sell it for because they only need to pay their loan off, yes, don't they? Yes, they, they are trying to get their principal sum back. They're not trying to sell your property for as much as they can. No, they just, yeah. and, and, and you know, that's why, so, so we'll probably talk about certain kinds of funding, um, but in, in a lot of instances, so um, being an ex-funder, so having sat in the position where I'm lending the money, being you know working in banks and, and, and financial financial institutions, you are there to say, well, fundamentally, in a in a gone scenario, all we want to make sure is that the money we have lent is repaid, so we we are it's not going to come back. Yeah. yeah, and 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 typically, actually, the, the the PG is there just to make sure they're working with you. So if there's an asset there, that will always be the first course of recourse. The first yeah course of recourse. So they will look to take the asset, or or let, or, or, or sell the asset, or um, you know, that's what that's what they will um, liquefy, if you like, yeah. whether it's a machine or whether it's a debtor book, um, and then so, any... so 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 the lender doesn't care if you lose all your customers, you you you, you know, you, all your stock is wasted or what, it doesn't matter. We've got a building, we're okay. Yeah, exa- yeah. exactly that. And and, and and the amount of security on a loan has a direct correlation with the, the, the cost of the borrowing, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So if you've got a really good asset that they can lend against and they'll lend a little bit against the valuable asset, you'll tend to pay not that much interest. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you haven't got anything, it's not that you won't get any money, it's just it's going to cost you a lot more it's a, it's to a, pay the interest. So it's it? a good way of looking at it. And, and when, I, when I'm speaking to a client, I'm sitting on the side of the desk of the client having, so I suppose it's the gamekeeper turn Poacher, no, poacher turned gamekeeper scenario whereby, um, oh no, I think it was right the first time. Um, whereby it's, it's, it's hard when we're talking about lenders and banks because who's the good guy? Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely one of them and now You've sitting on the other sides. side. So, so I'll yeah. sit on the side of the client, but, but you know, having sat on the side of the, uh, the funder, I understand um, that when you're looking at rate, it's a very simple risk versus reward type scenario. So yeah. if a funder is fully secured, therefore their risk is relatively small, that'll be reflected in the price. They don't need to charge you as much interest. A- exactly. Yeah. If the if the, the lend is, is unsecured or particularly high risk, and the risk could also be around the maturity of the business, the circumstances of the business, um, the profitability of the business. So financials play a big part yeah. in, in working yeah. out um, risk and, and, and return. Um, then, yeah, so if, if, if that risk is perceived to be higher, the interest rate or the, 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 the cost of borrowing that, that, that money will always be higher. Yeah. And it tends to be proportionate. And, and, and as a result of that, those kind of things, those variables that affect whether you're going to get money or not, that can then dramatically influence the way you're going to have to raise your money. Because you might have a harebrained scheme of an idea with no money, no customers, you're not really going to get any lend against that from yeah. most traditional channels. You'd have to find someone who's got a load of money who believes in your hairbrain scheme. Yeah. And yeah. that, and going um, back to and the... And that's the Dragon's Den kind of yeah, thing, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to go back to that first point. That is your equity versus debt. Equity, yeah. high risk, but high reward, because if it works... Yeah. So if you, can, if you can blow this business up <laughs> into you know, an international multi-million pound business, who cares if you give 25% away to the person who backed you? Yeah. You don't mind having 75% of a multi-million pound business. Exactly that. But a bank's never going to help you do that, are they? Well, a bank will will get the same return whether they lend to 
Tesco or they lend to somebody that... that 3% is 3%, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. They're so, not taking a ride in the business at all. Though. Exactly, yeah. which is why the, the different products help you kind of navigate where your business sits and what, and what so, they so, so what if then... So we've talked about lending against stuff. We're, mm -hmm. we're lending against the property. We're lending against, um, I mean, you know, a large machine. You might want to buy a hundred grand printing press. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this, but that was always, <laughs> it lasted for a hundred years. They're probably out of, yeah. A big, big steam powered. Uh, <laughs> it's, all, it's all digital now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no, no, we actually still fund them. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, you know what I mean? You might want to, Buy some big kit. You might want yeah. to buy a fleet of lorries or yeah. something. So lorries have an instinctive value. Yeah. They're insured against loss anyway. There's always a lorry you can take it off you. Um, but what if you haven't got assets then, and you just want? You think, well, I've got I've got orders coming in. Every time I issue, I get paid. People might have heard of things like invoice factoring or you yeah. know, invoice discounting. Is it worth uh, explaining uh, that? Briefly? Yeah. So that is the, probably the most common type of working capital. Um, lending that gets done these days it, it replaced overdrafts because from the funding perspective it's a it's a secure way of lending because um effectively what they are doing is if you've got a, a b2b business and you're invoicing clients all the funder is doing is is releasing cash early against those invoices so you invoice easy easy way of explaining this is um you know you've got a hundred uh so a thousand pound invoice um which we'll strip it right back just so the numbers are, are very easy um thousand pound invoice they will lend you um, eighty-five percent of that in the value of that invoice on day one. So imagine you have a ledger which then. So on the day on the day you raise an invoice from B to B, business to business, yeah. we invoice you. Um, the lender will step in and say, "Well, we're pretty sure we're going to get most of that money in, so we'll lend you eighty-five p in the pound right now." Yeah. I haven't now got to wait that ninety yeah. hundred and twenty days. Yeah. So so exactly that. So what it is, it's, it's effectively it's bridging a cash flow gap. So they will, um, so they will end it on it's day like one. Like almost a payday loan, isn't it? You, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, Per and, invoice. And, and, and yeah, and there's the, the, there is various types of, of invoice finance, which uh, go from kind of payday loan rates to, to, to the banks do this quite regularly as well. So you'll even have your large corporates in there, but effectively exactly that, the lending against the works that's done, completed works on day one or day two of, yeah. of, of you raising the invoice. What happens, um, then, so, so, so you don't lose the additional fifteen hundred pounds. If we go for the, um, yeah. sorry, uh, one hundred and fifty. Was it? All oh, right, did I? Was that a thousand pound invoice? So yeah, it was yeah. a ten thousand pound yeah, invoice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, um, trying so, backtrack. Yeah, but you've, you've blown it. You've so the fifteen hundred would have been based on a ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so thousand pound invoice. You don't. So, so you get paid the um, eight hundred and fifty on day one. You don't then lose the hundred and fifty. What What will happen is. Um, you know, you've you've drawn down that eight hundred and fifty against the value of that whole interest, uh, that whole invoice. On day uh, sixty or seventy, you may then um, you will then get paid from your client. It might be daily, might yeah, whatever the Eventually terms are. Eventually, they'll pay you. Hopefully, yeah. Typically, you know, commercial terms. Um, it typically always tends to be between sixty and seventy-five days. It can be 90, can be can be further, but but yeah, so you'll get paid. And then once the customer pays, so the customer then pays the full value of that invoice back, um, and it will go into a trust account. It, it, that's probably um, more detail than you need to know. But effectively, when the funder then relieves, re receives the full value of the invoice, the additional 15, uh, 150 pound will then drop back into, into your account or your availability, minus the fees. Minus the skim. Minus the skim, yeah. yeah. The, the, the interest, want a better word, exactly, and the charges, yeah. Exactly that. So, so by getting the money up front, you get less of it, but you get it when you raise the invoice. Yeah. So what, what tends to happen is, um, you know, if you're lending, if you're borrowing 80, 85% of, of, of an invoice, uh, or the value of the invoices, that tends to cover um, the cost of, of the um, of, of whatever it is you have provided service or product and then the 15% tends to be or the 20% tends to be your margin so you're waiting effectively for your margin but yeah. if you cover the cost that's the working capital back so, in the business. And, and there is an issue there if you get your numbers wrong on this you can get into some, some an arrangement like that and it's very hard to yeah. get back out isn't it yeah it, so unless you're making good money on that 85% yeah You've got. It's yeah. going to be quite hard to then ever be able to break that cycle, isn't it? Yeah, it did. I have. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have heard um, certain people, you know, call invoice finance kind of 
class A drugs of the finance world because it is addictive. People are used to getting the money um, the day they get their invoice. So, so yeah, because bluntly, then if you're used to a sixty to ninety day payment term on with, with your customers to get out of that. You've, you can only get out of it once you've got three months worth of working capital back in your bank, so, can't you? So to get out of it, realistically, there's a, and I would say this with any kind of lending, you go in with your eyes open, you go in knowing what you want and what you need, you go in knowing the financials behind the business, um, knowing your cash flows in the business, and you go in with a plan to get in and get out. Yeah. So, so what you would tend to do, because it's a, a revolving facility, so every time you're invoice, uh, invoicing, you're building the, the, the cash availability, every time yeah. you're drawing down, you're reducing it, but every time clients pays, then increases again. Um, so it's so typically the best way to get off it is to wean yourself off. So then you start, you know, it's just slowing down the drawdowns and letting the cash naturally build up in the facility. So instead of taking it out the day after, you say, well, actually we'll not have 85 pence out straight away, we'll, we'll do 80, yeah. is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly that. And, and um, So like a gradual weaning. Yeah, yeah, unless the business is just very cash generative as well. So unless you've, you've, you've got to a stage where the business become incredibly cash generative, where you can just afford, where you, you'll stop, you'll naturally stop using it. Because why would you draw down a facility that you don't necessarily need? Yeah. Um, so you either wean yourself off or you um, just naturally kind of come off, come off. Or, and or, as a lot of people or, use or it. Or you get addicted. Or you get, or you get addicted. <laughs> and you look for bigger highs. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And it's over. That's it. It's over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, you, you'll be very surprised. So, so obviously, I was giving you um, the the kind of small, broken down version of, of how it will work, just just so you understand the fundamentals. But um, you know, a lot of a lot of the the corporates, um, a lot of the very profitable businesses use some form of invoice finance. It might be badged up as a as a revolving credit facility. You'll have heard of a revolver or something. Yeah. But ultimately. It's or, or invoice discounting where it's bulk uploads. Again, I'll not get into the, the difference of, of, of different products. Um, uh, sorry, I'll not get into the specifics of different products. But um, but actually, a lot of companies use it, and it's because it's very difficult to get invo- uh, overdrafts these days, and and that's that's just due to the the securities around. Yeah. That. So why why do people then normally fail? Oh, everyone's seen the old computer says no kind of sketch from, yeah, yeah. I can't remember, was it Little Britain or whatever it was yeah. many years ago? You know, you obviously, obviously you're, the, you're now acting on the side of the business trying to get money, mm-hmm. but obviously you have sat on the other side and had to say yes yeah. and no to people. What, 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 is, it, is it just that people haven't got a basic grasp of their figures? Is that why people fail? Or I mean, at some point, if you're going to, um, if you're looking for finance, at some point, whether it be the front end, which is much easier for everybody, or the back end, you're going to have to produce some some relatively. What what, what do you mean by front end or back end? Um, so whether it is um, actually accessing, uh, sorry, knowing what you're looking for, or finding what you're looking for, finding what the art of the possible is, and then they will say to get this. We oh, need so, to you, see so, that. so you so you mean plan the finance at the start of any project yeah, rather than wait till you get to the end and they go, oh, how are we going to pay for it? Exa- that right? Exactly that. So um, so ultimately, you're going to you're going to have to understand whether the business is is viable. All the funders are looking at is financial viabilities, uh, financial viability. Can they service debt, um, and and what does the cash look like in the business? Um, so you so you need to understand those figures. So which is why. Um, this works because obviously the first thing I will do is 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 ask for that information and typically the accountant will get the the phone call. Um, you know, we need a cash flow. That. We need we need yeah. management accounts. So yeah. a- a- exactly that. So so a lot of the the first hurdled failures if you're looking for finance is um, you know they don't have a handle on the numbers yeah. um, or they don't understand what they need or why they need it. So so, so you might get. You know, you might get a phone call saying, "I need two hundred and fifty grand," and that might just be the short term issue. But actually, as you as you plot out the cash flows, um, you realise that that two hundred and fifty grand actually turns into half a million. Because you might you might borrow two fifty to buy a machine, mm-hmm. but you forget that when you get the machine, you know, triple your turnover, but you've got to fund the working capital between the product being coming off the machine and getting paid. Yeah. You need to borrow the increased work and capital to allow you to get to the point of getting paid, or so, yeah. And a lot of people mistake that yeah. and, and just think, 
Or, or they'll go the other way and say, well, I need 100 grand. You go, if you, you forgot about the fact this comes in and that happens and you'll recover your VAT or... Both both scenarios occur. Um, so, so, you know, both scenarios, you'll, you'll have the conversation where you sit down and they want, um, you know, I said they, the business is looking for, and again, just, just, just kind of round figures, looking for a quarter of a million pound and you realise actually you just need to shuffle a few things around and there's no requirement for funding in there or... And this is the, the, the worst thing that can um, that can happen is if they um, are looking for 250, for example, and the the financials um, that don't have a handle on the number, but they get the 250, and then it turns out the requirement was actually 400. Once you've crystallised that loan, it's then difficult to top it up. So you're, then, you're never going to be able to go back and get that 150. Yeah, you? exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so, but, but fundamentally, um, the no's come from um, not knowing the numbers or not understanding. I mean, again, everyone's seen Dragons Den where they go, "I want, I want, I want a million pound for three percent of my business." Right? What are your sales? Oh, we've sold a few. Yeah. Right? No, no. What are the numbers? Yeah. How many? What money did you make on it? How much money have you got? Where's your skin? What are you putting in? Yeah. That's all got to be set out before you get there, hasn't it? Exactly that. I mean, before you go to the lender, I suppose part of your job is to, people could come to you without any of that, and you go, we need all of this, mind you. Well, part Otherwise, of, you're wasting your time. Go. Yeah, exactly. Part of our jobs, and like I say, we see, we see everything from, from your, you know, your small growing business or, or distressed business right up to, you know, probably don't see much more over 70, 80 million turn of a business, but, you know, pretty... Um, pretty mature um, and well-managed businesses but but part of our role is first and foremost to collate the information understand the information and a lot of the time and it, it doesn't matter where they are in that business scale a lot of the time um, you find out very quickly if there's, if there's not a handle on the numbers and it will fall over at that stage um, and then it, once we have that information half of half of them um, or a lot of our job is then structuring it to, to know which is the best product, but also which is the best funder for that exact environment. Yeah. Um, and, and just, just understanding what the art of the possible is. Because there's also, I mean, I mean, most people probably think when, when you start out in business, you're fairly naive. You think there's what, five, six high street names mm -hmm. on like literally high street banks. But the reality is there's hundreds, if not thousands of lenders mm -hmm. who are into some weird, obscure niche, yeah. kind of like very unusual things, which, yeah, there's, there's kind of something for everyone out there, isn't it? But finding it, it can be quite tricky. A absolutely. But, the, but there, are, there are all ways to find some yeah, pretty unusual and, things. And that's, that's probably why we become more relevant as well. So not only is it just managing that process, because we speak the, 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 bank, the bank's language or the funder's language, but as you say, um, anybody can walk into Barclays, HSBC, Santander, Lloyds, you know, the, 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 the high streets. Um, but but actually they only fund a very small percentage of what's out there and, and that's because of where the risk appetite is and because Cause they're, they're, they're of wholesale. the volumes. So yeah, they just yeah. want big volume. I mean, I mean the, old, the old classic saying, certainly from when, when we looked at this with clients, we kind of go, well, if you don't need it, you'll probably be able to lend it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and again, it's just risk, isn't it? Yeah. As low risk as possible and just, you know, keep it as simple as possible. It, but there are people out there willing to take a bit, a bit more of a punt on Yeah, and it's, it's the, so, so, you know, probably 20% of, um, of people looking for money will get, well, in that commercial and corporate space, most of the commercial funding space will be able to get it from the banks. And that is, yeah, they're looking for your straightforward, Kind of mature business that that ticks all of the boxes from a from a financial perspective, um, has very straight um, uh, kind of debt servicing abilities and and and, and hits all the hits all the the, the metrics. Um, but actually, eighty percent of the uh, of the, the the people that are looking for funding probably won't fall in that bank's criteria. Yeah. Um, and that is where the the secondary market, your challenger banks, your independents. That's where they come in, um, and that's, unfortunately, that's a lot of those people just go away and say, "Well, I've tried." Yeah, exactly. And, and, didn't and, get anywhere. And you know, and, and actually, a lot of a lot of the banks don't know that market as well because well, they're well, so it's busy. Not their market. Exactly. They're so they only lend their own money. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that's that's where we see a lot of activity now. Um, yeah, it's you know, like like I said, probably eighty percent of people looking for fund will, will sit outside of your high street banks now, okay. um, which is yeah why we exist really. <laughs> 
So okay, then we'll we'll we'll, we'll wrap it up then, Graham. Give, give us give us give us your top two tips. You know why do most people fail in in, in best practice if you want to make sure you've got the best chance. Just give, just give us some final thoughts. Yep. Um, so why do most people fail? Um, it is almost exclusively cash management. Very rare do you see businesses fail because they're not profitable. It's because they run out of cash. Um, you know, a, a best practice for me, and um, you know, I know it's easier said than done, but if you've got a good accountant on board and you run a 13-week rolling cash flow, um, you will identify any issues coming up. Um, Hopefully 13 weeks out. Yeah, with time, yeah. with time to react to them. Um, so kind of and, and understanding the numbers and understanding when you're costing a job or a project, um, you understand what you need what profit you need within within that job to make it worth your while um, uh, it, it's, it's it's quite a topical time as well because we're you know we're a couple of years after the original lockdowns there was a lot of 50 grand bounce backs handed out people have got you know six seven eight hundred quid a month to find all of a sudden and it's 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 squeezing people now isn't mm-hmm. it because they got that 50 in and replaced the money that should have came through the till yep but they didn't you know they've just basically got to now pay that back. So unless they're now twice as profitable, that's that's going to be taking a big chunk of people's income off them, isn't it? There is, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, you, you've got the... Um, so there's a lot. there was a lot of cash about, um, or a lot of access to, to funding over um, the COVID period. And, yeah, so you've got people now servicing debt that they wouldn't have ordinarily had, and that was with the, the Sybil's loans. Yeah, yeah. Um, and with the, the um, recovery loan scheme that followed the, the, the yeah, Sybil's yeah, loan, yeah. which um, probably will create a bit of activity where people um, and and the banks that lend them will either require more funding or, or the funders will become a little bit nervous around what the portfolio looks like. Because they're going to want them off that, aren't they? Yes. They're going to want them off it on the more traditional types of lend. Exactly yeah. that. And, and I'm not sure there's a I'm not sure there's a, a natural solution or an obvious solution yet. Um, and it's probably because yeah. we're not at the end of RLS. By, by June, there'll be no more government-supported um, coronavirus-related yeah. um, uh, uh, funding there, support. Yeah, thank you. Um, so there will so, so, so issues will naturally come out of that, um, but as yet it, it's it's basically it's going to be an interesting period. But there will also be solutions wherever there is issues. Solutions will will emerge. And and, um, and, 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 and also, I mean, we, we we chatted briefly before this. Often people are paranoid or, or neurotic about trying to get the cost of a deal as low as possible. Mm-hmm. But actually, if they're trying to do something where the payoff is huge, mm-hmm. don't cripple over a couple of percent or giving away a little bit of something. Just think, think of the back end, which again is where you need to make sure you've got your figures down. Yeah, isn't it? there's, there's. If you're going to tri- triple your business for the sake of getting some money. Don't quibble about whether it's six percent or eight percent. Yeah, there's, who cares? There's, you're going to triple your business. Exactly. There's funding cost and opportunity cost, yeah. and you know you, the the cost of funding related. Uh, um, in in uh, comparison to the cost of you losing out on opportunity might actually be yeah. negligible when you when you see it written down um so yeah you're absolutely right sometimes getting the cash that you require to do whatever it is you need to do with it is far more important than almost at any cost yeah, yeah. Than, than, yeah. than you know it'll only ever be uh, uh you know a few percent which in pounds and pence against the the the, the profit that you might make on that becomes negligible yeah Obviously, within regulated lending circles, yeah, we're not talking about loan sharks or shift, oh, no, no, no. shifty Dave down the club. <laughs> yeah. No brown, um, no brown paper bags yeah, full of cash. Just no, it's... normal traditional lending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, lenders that are responsible and generally Respl- FCA yeah. authorized. Always, and always drink responsibly. Yeah. Is what we're saying. Always lend responsibly. Absolutely. Um, well, listen, Graham. Thanks very much. That's been great. Um, we hope you've learned something there about lending and how it works. We've hopefully covered off some of the terms that you might not have been aware of. And um, I'm sure if you want to speak to anyone, Graham will be happy to, to, to hear from you. Um, but for now, that's this week's episode over. As always, please give us your comments, leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening or watching and reach out if you've got any queries. Thanks, Graham. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers.